Hello everyone, welcome back to the SuperCloud presentation here. I'm theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, host. We've got a great segment here. We're going to unpack the networking aspect of the cloud, how that translates into what SuperCloud architecture and platform deployment scenarios look like and demystify multi-cloud, hybrid cloud. We've got two great experts, Amir Khan, the co-founder and CEO of Alkira, and Atif Khan, co-founder and CTO of Alkira. This guy's been around since 2018 with the startup, but before that, storied history in the tech industry. I mean, routing early days, multiple waves, multiple cycles. Welcome, welcome three decades. <laughs> welcome to SuperCloud. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much for having us. So let's get your take on SuperCloud because it's been one of those conversations that's really galvanized the industry because it kind of highlights almost this next wave, this next side of the street that everyone's going to be on that's going to be successful. The laggards and the legacy seem to be stuck on the old model. SaaS is growing up, it's ISVs, it's ecosystems, mm -hmm. hyperscale full hybrid and then multi-cloud around the corner has caused all this confusion, everyone's hand waving, you know, this is a solution, that solution. Where are we, what do you guys see as this super cloud dynamic? So where we start from is always focusing on the customer problem. And in 2018, when we identified the problem, we saw that there were multiple clouds with many diverse ways of doing things from the network perspective and customers were struggling with that. So we delved deeper into that and looked at each one of the cloud architectures completely independent, and there was no common solution. And customers were struggling with that from the perspective that they wanted to be in multiple clouds, either through mergers and acquisitions, or running an application which may be more cost effective to run in something, or maybe optimized for certain reasons to run in a different cloud. But from the networking perspective, everything needed to come together. So that's, we are starting to define it as a super cloud now, but basically it's a common infrastructure across all clouds, and then integration of higher layer services like you know, security or I, IPAM services or many other types of services like inter-partner routing and stuff like that. So I mean, you, you agree then that multi-cloud is simply a default result of having whatever outcomes, either M&A, some productivity software, maybe Azure. Yes. Amazon and has this and then I've got on-premise applications. So it's kind of a mishmash. So I would qualify it with hybrid multi-cloud because everything is going to be interconnected, it. whether it's on-premise, remote users, or clouds. At the CTO perspective, obviously, um, you got developers, multiple stacks, you got AWS, Azure, GCP, other. Not everyone wants to kind of like go all in, but yet they don't want to hedge too much because that's a resource issue, and I got to learn this stack, I got to learn that stack. Yeah. So then now you have this default multi-cloud, hybrid multi-cloud, then it's like, okay, what do I do? How do you spread that around? Is it dangerous? What's the What's the approach technically? What's some of the challenges there? Yeah, certainly, uh, John. First, uh, thanks for having us here. Um, so I'll, I'll, before I get to that, I'll just add a little bit to uh, what mm -hmm. Amir was saying, like how we started, what we were seeing, and how it you know, correlates with, uh, with the super cloud. So um, as, you, as you know, uh, before this uh, company, Alkira, we were uh, doing, uh, we did the uh, SD-WAN company, which was uh, Viptela. So there uh, we started seeing, when people started deploying uh, SD-WAN at like a larger scale, we started like, uh, you know, customers coming to us and saying they needed connectivity into the cloud um, uh, from the SD-WAN. They wanted to extend the SD-WAN fabric to the cloud. Um, so we came up with, with, a, with an architecture which was like uh, later we started calling them cloud on ramps where we built you know uh, a transit VPC and uh, put like the virtual instances of uh, SD-WAN appliances extended from there uh, to the cloud. Uh, but uh, before we knew like it, it started becoming very complicated for the customers because it wasn't just connectivity. It also required you know uh, other use cases you had to uh, instantiate uh, or uh, bring in uh, security appliances in there. Uh, you had to secure all all of that stuff. There was uh, there were requirements for uh, you know different regions. So you had to bring up the same thing in different regions. Mm -hmm. Then multiple clouds. What did you do? You had to replicate the same thing in multiple clouds. And now if there was was requirement yeah. between clouds, how were you going to do it? You had to route traffic from somewhere and and come up with all the the, the those routing controls <laughs> and stuff. So it, it was very complicated. Like spaghetti uh, code, but on network. The game spaghetti. In fact, uh, <laughs> yeah. one of our customers call, uh, yeah. uh, uh, called it uh, spaghetti mess, and uh, so that's where like we 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 thought about uh, uh, what where was the industry going mm -hmm. and which direction uh, uh, the industry was going into. And uh, we came up with the uh, Alkira, where what we are doing is building a common infrastructure across uh, multiple clouds, across uh, in, uh, you know on-prem locations, be it data centers or uh, 
or uh, physical sites, branches, uh, sites, etc. Uh, with integrated security and uh, network, networking services uh, inside. And you know, nowadays networking is not only about connectivity. You have to secure uh, everything. So security has to be built in. Yeah. Uh, redundancy, high availability, uh, disaster recovery. Mm -hmm. So all of that needs to be built in. So that's like, you know, uh, <laughs> kind of a definition of like what we thought uh, at that time, uh, what uh, uh, is turning into. Yeah, it's cloud interesting now. too. You mentioned you know, those VPCs and not configuration alone's a hassle. Right. Never mind the manual mistakes could be made. But as you decide to do something, you're going to, oh, we got to get these other things. Yeah. A lot of the hyperscales and a lot of the alpha cloud players now and cloud native folks, they're kind of in that mode of, wow, look at what we built. Now they're going to maintain it. How do I refresh it? Like, how do I keep the talent? So they got this similar chaotic environment where it's like, okay, now they're already, already through, so I think they're going to be okay. But then some people want to bypass it completely. So there's a lot of customers that we see out there that, that fit the makeup of, I'm cloud first, I've lifted and shifted, I moved some stuff to the cloud, but I want to bypass all that learnings and from all the people that are gone through the past three years. Can I just skip that? Exactly. And go to uh, a multi-cloud or a coherent Hmm. Infrastructure. What do you think about that? What's the what's your view? So yeah. Uh, so if you look at uh, these enterprises, uh, uh, you know many of them um, just to find like the talent, uh, 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 which uh, for one cloud, uh, as far as the IT staff is concerned, it's it's hard enough. Mm -hmm. And now when you have multiple clouds, it's it's hard to find people uh, the talent, which is uh, you know. Which, which has expertise across across different clouds. Uh, so that's where uh, we come into the, into the picture. So our vision was always to simplify all of this stuff. And, uh, and simplification, it cannot be just simplification because you cannot just automate the workflows of uh, the cloud providers underneath. So you have to you know, provide your full data plane on top of it, full control plane, management plane, policy and management on top of yeah. it. Uh, and coming back to like uh, your question, uh, so these uh, uh, nowadays, he, he, th those people who are working on on networking, you know, before it used to be like CLI, you yeah. you you used to learn about uh, Cisco CLI or Juniper CLI, and you you used to work on it. Nowadays, it's very different. Yeah. So automation, programmability, all of that stuff is is the key. So mm -hmm. uh, so now you know the ops guys, the DevOps guys. So these are these are the people who are in the highest uh, in high demand. So what do you think about the folks out there that are saying, okay, you got a lot of fragmentation, I got the stacks, there are a lot of stove pipes, if you will, out there on the stack. I got to learn this from Azure. Can you guys, with your product, abstract away that so developers don't need to know mm -hmm. the ins and outs of the stacks? Almost like a gateway, if you will, in the old days. But like, if I'm a developer or a team of developers, why should I have to learn exactly. the yeah. management and layer of mm -hmm. Azure? That's exactly what we started uh, you know, uh, out with to, to solve. Um, so it's, what we have built is a platform uh, and the platform sits inside the cloud and uh, customers are able to build their own network or a virtual network on top using that platform. So the platform has its own data plane, own uh, control plane and management plane with a policy layer on top of it. Uh, so now it's, it's, it's the platform which is sitting in different clouds but from a customer's point of view, it's one way of doing networking one way of instantiating or bringing in services or security services uh, in the middle, whether it's our, whether those are our security services or whether those are like uh, uh, services from our, our partners, like Palo Alto or Checkpoint or Cisco. So you guys brought the SD-WAN mojo and refactored it for the cloud, sounds like. No. No? <laughs> <laughs> you cannot say that. <laughs> All right, it's explain. Way, it's, it's way more than that. I mean, SD-WAN uh, was WAN. I mean, you talk about wide area networks, you talk right. about connected, so explain SD the SD-WAN was primarily done uh, for one major reason. MPLS was expensive, uh, very strong SLAs, but very low speed. Internet, on the other hand, you sat at home and you could access your applications much faster. No SLA, very low cost, right? So we wanted to marry the two together so you could have a purely private infrastructure and a public infrastructure and secure both of them by creating a common secure fabric across all those environments and then seamlessly tying it into your internal branch and data center and cloud network. So it merely brought you to the edge of the cloud. It didn't do anything inside the cloud. Now, the major problem resides inside the clouds where you have to optimize the clouds themselves. Take a step back, how were the clouds built? Basically, the cloud providers went to the Cisco's and Juniper's and the rest of the world, built the network in the data centers or across wide area infrastructure and brought it all together and tried to create a virtualized layer on top of that 
but there were many limitations of this underlying infrastructure that they had built. So number of routes per region, how inter-region connectivity worked, or how many routes you could carry to the VPCs or VNets, that all those become, were becoming no common policy across uh, you know, these environments, no segmentation across these environments, right? So the networking constructs that the enterprise customers were used to as enterprise class carrier class capabilities, they did not exist in the cloud. So what did the customer do? They ended up stitching it together all manually, and that's why Atif was alluding to, uh, to earlier that it became a spaghetti mess for the customers. Yeah. And then what happens is as a result, day two operations, yeah. you know, troubleshooting, everything becomes a nightmare. So what do you do? You have to build an infrastructure inside the cloud. Cloud has enough raw capabilities to build the solutions inside there. Netflix is of the world and many different companies have been born in the cloud and evolved from there. So why could we not take the raw capabilities of the clouds and build a network cloud or a super cloud on top yeah. of these clouds to optimize the whole infrastructure and seamlessly connecting it into the on-premise and remote user locations, right? So that's your you know, hybrid multi-cloud well, solution. Well, great call out on the SD-WAN comment yeah. versus cloud, because I think this is important, because you're building a, a network layer in the cloud that spans out, so By the customers don't have to get into the, right. uh, there's a gap in the system that I'm used to, my operating environment of having locked down State exactly. Security and network. So yeah. And so what you do is you use the raw capabilities like bandwidth or virtual machines or you know containers or you know different types of uh, serverless capabilities, and you bring it all together in a way to solve the networking problems. Thereby creating a super cloud, which is an abstraction layer which hides all the complexity of the underlying clouds from the customer, right? And it provides a common infrastructure across all environments to that customer. Right, that's the beauty of it. And it does it in a way that it looks like if they have the networking knowledge, they can apply it to this new environment and carry it forward. One way of doing security across all clouds and hybrid environments, one way of doing routing, one way of doing large scale network address translation, one way of doing IPAM services. So people are tired of doing individual things in individual clouds and on-premise locations, yeah. right? So now they're getting something common. So you guys common. brought that, you brought all that to bear and flexible for the customer to essentially self-serve yes. their network yes. cloud. And nowadays, the from way? a business perspective, agility is the key, right? You have to move at the pace of the business. If you don't, you're losing. So would it be safe to say that you guys have a network super cloud? V, absolutely, pretty much, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You, you what does that mean think? for a customer? <laughs> What's in it for them? What's the benefit to the customer? I got a network super cloud, it connects, provides SLA, all the capabilities I need. Right. What do they get? What's, what's the end point for them? What's the, what's yeah. the so end? I think maybe you so can talk it, some examples. Yeah. IT infrastructure is all like distributed now, right? So you have applications running in data centers, you have applications running in one cloud, other cloud, public clouds. Uh, enterprises are depending on uh, so many SaaS applications. So now uh, uh, these are, you can call these endpoints. So a super cloud or a network cloud, from our perspective, it's a, it's a cloud in the middle or a network in the middle which provides connectivity uh, from any endpoint to any endpoint. So, so you are able to connect to this super cloud or network cloud in one way, no matter where you are. So now, whichever cloud you're in, whichever cloud you need to connect to, and also, um, it's not just connecting to the cloud. So you need to do a lot of stuff, a lot of networking inside the cloud also. So now, as Amir was saying, every cloud has its own, from a networking, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the concepts uh, perspective or the, or the constructs, uh, they are different. Uh, there are limitations uh, in there also. So this super cloud, which is sitting on top, basically uh, your platform is sitting inside the cloud, but the net, uh, super cloud is built on top of uh, uh, using your platform. So that abstracts all those uh, uh, complexities, all those limitations. So now your limitations are whatever the limitations of that mm -hmm. platform are. So now your platform, that platform is, yeah. is, is in our control. So we can keep building it. We can keep scaling it horizontally because uh, one of the things is that, um, you know, uh, in this cloud era, mm -hmm. one of the things is auto-scaling uh, yeah. these services. So why can't the network now auto-scale also mm -hmm. just like your uh, other yeah. services? Network auto-scaling is a genius idea and I think that's killer. I want to ask the, um, the follow-on question because I think, first of all, I love, love what you guys are doing. So I think it's, I think it's a great example of this new innovation. It's not obvious until you see it, right? Mm -hmm. um, geographical is huge. So, you know, single instance, global instances, multiple instances, you're seeing global. Mm -hmm. How do you guys look at that global equation? Because as companies expand their clouds, 
into geos, and then ultimately, you know, it's obviously continent, region, and locales. Yeah. You're going to have geographic issues. Mm -hmm. So, is so this an extension of your network cloud. It is the extension of the network cloud because if you look at this uh, hyperscalers, they're sitting pretty much everywhere in the uh, in in the globe. So wherever their regions are, the beauty of building a super cloud is that you can, by definition, be available in those regions. It literally takes a day or two of testing for our stack to run in those regions to make sure there are no nuances that we run into you know, for that region. The moment we bring it up in that region, all customers can onboard into that solution. So literally, what used to take months or years to build a global infrastructure, now you can configure it in 10 minutes, basically, and, and bring it up in less than one hour. Since when did we see yeah. any solution and by the way, that can the, come the, up with when that? When the edge comes out to you, you start seeing more clouds get exactly, bolted on. Exactly, and you can expand to the edge of the network. Yeah. That's why we call cloud the new edge. Yeah, it is. Right? Yeah, I think you guys got a good solution. It's network clouds, super clouds, good. It's a question on the premise side, so I get the cloud play. Yeah. It's very cool. You can expand out, it's a nice layer. Yeah. I'm sure you manage the SLAs between latency and right. all kinds of things, right. knowing when not to do things, right. physics or physics. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you got the on-premise. What's the on-premise equation look like? So on-premise, uh, the kind of customers we, we are working with, large enterprises, mid-sized enterprises, uh, so they have on-prem networks. They have mm -hmm. deployed, uh, in many cases, they have deployed SD-WAN. In many cases, they have MPLS. Uh, they have data centers also, and, and a lot of these companies are you know moving the, uh, applications from their data center into the cloud, but we still have large But for you guys, you can you can sit there too with exactly. on a server, or is it a box, or um, what is it? It's a software stack, right? So our, our, we, we are a software company. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you no can box. Run, no box. Okay, got it. Uh, mm -hmm. No box. Even better. So, so, so we can connect uh, any, as I mentioned, any endpoint, whether it's data center. So, so what happens is usually these enterprises from the data centers. It's a cloud endpoint for you. Cloud endpoint yeah. for us, and they need high-speed connectivity into the cloud. And our network cloud is sitting inside the, or super cloud is sitting inside the cloud. Yeah. So we need high-speed connectivity from the data centers. This is like multi-gig type of connectivity. So we enable that connectivity as a service. Uh, and, and as Amir was mm -hmm. saying, you're able to bring it up in minutes, uh, mm -hmm. pretty much. Well, you guys have a great handle on SuperCloud. I really appreciate you guys coming on. I have to ask you guys, since you have so much experience in the industry, multiple inflection points you guys lived through, and we're all old and we can remember those glory days. Um, what's the big deal going on right now? Because you can connect the dots, you can imagine, okay, like a Lambda function, spin me up some connectivity. I need mm -hmm. instant access to a new route. Throw some, I need to send compute to an edge point to process data. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of these kind of ad hoc services are going to start mm -hmm. flying around, which used to yeah. be manually configured, as you and, guys remember. And that's been the problem, right? Uh, the shadow uh, IT, that was the biggest problem in the enterprise environments. And that's what we are trying to get the customers away from. Yeah. Cloud teams came in, individuals or small groups of people spun up instances in the cloud, it was completely disconnected from the on-premise environment or the existing IT environment that the customer had. So how do you bring it together? And that's what we are trying to solve for, right? At a large scale in a carrier class. What do you call that, shift right platform. or shift left? Shift <laughs> left is in the cloud native world, security. <laughs> yes. Networking and security are the two hottest areas. What, what are you shifting, up or down? I mean, I mean, the network's moving up the stack. I mean, you're seeing the run times at Kubernetes right, lately. Right. It's true end-to-end yeah. -end virtualization. Yeah. So you have plumbing, which is the physical infrastructure. Then on top of that, now for the first time, you have true end-to-end and virtualization, which the cloud-like constructs are providing to us. We tried to virtualize the routers. We tried to virtualize instances at the server level. Now we are bringing it all together in a truly end-to-end -end virtualized manner to connect any endpoint yeah. anywhere across the globe, whether it's on-premise, home, multiple clouds, or SaaS type environments. Yeah, to talk about the technical benefits beyond virtualization, because you're starting to see in virtualization be abstracted away. Yeah. So you got end-to-end yeah. -end virtualization, but you don't need to know virtualization to take exactly. advantage of it. Exactly. What are some of the tech involved where, mm -hmm. what's the trend around on top of virtual, what's the, yeah. what's the easy button for that? So uh, there are many, many use cases from the customers, uh, and they're, uh, you know, some of those use cases they used to deliver out, to, uh, out of their data centers uh, before. So now, the tra uh, now because, uh, you know, it takes a long time uh, to spend something up in the data center and stuff. So the trend is, and what, what enterprises are looking for is agility. And to achieve that agility, they're moving those services or those use cases into the cloud. So. Mm -hmm. Another technical benefit of like something like a super cloud, what we are doing is we allow customers to, you know, uh, move their services from 
uh, existing data centers into the cloud as well. And I'll give you some examples. Uh, you know, uh, these enterprises have uh, you know tons of partners. They provide mm -hmm. connectivity to, to their partners to select uh, select resources. It used to happen inside the data center. Uh, you would bring in connectivity into the data center and apply like tons of ACLs and whatnot to make sure that you're able to only connect. And now those use cases are, uh, ne they need to be enabled inside the cloud. And the customer's customers are also, it's not just coming from the on-prem, they're coming from the cloud as well. Yeah. So so if they're coming from the cloud as well as from on-prem, so you need like an infrastructure mm -hmm. like super cloud, which is sitting inside the cloud and is able to uh, handle all these use cases. Um, so all of these use cases have to be, uh, so that requires like moving those services from the data center into the, the cloud or into the super cloud. So, um, so they're, they're, oh, as, as, as we started building uh, this uh, service uh, over the last four years, we have come across so many use cases. Yeah. And, and to deliver those use cases, you have to have a platform. So you have to have your own platform. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, you're depending on somebody else's uh, you know, uh, capabilities. And every time their capabilities change, yeah. you have to change. I'm it. glad you brought up the platform because I want to get your both reactions. Mm -hmm. So Bob Muglia just said on theCUBE here at SuperCloud, um, that SuperCloud is a platform that provides programmatically consistent services hosted on heterogeneous cloud providers. So the question is, is SuperCloud a platform or an architecture in your view? <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting view on things, you know? <laughs> I mean, if you, if you think of it, you have to design or architect a solution <laughs> before we turn it into a it's platform, It's a trick question, right? actually. So, it's a, you know, <laughs> so we look at it as that you have to have an architectural approach end-to-end. Right, and then you build a solution based on that approach. So I don't, I don't think that they are mutually exclusive. I think they go hand in hand. Yeah. It's an architecture that you turn into a, a solution and provide that agility and high availability and disaster recovery capability. It's interesting, that these definitions might be actually redefined with this new configuration. Yes. Because architecture and platform used to mean something. Like yes. I, here's a platform, you buy this platform. And then you architect architected your solution. by a vendor. Right, right, right. Okay, and, and, right. and they have to deal with that architecture. Uh, in yeah, the place of because multiple super clouds, if you have too many stove pipes, then what's the purpose of right, the super right, cloud? Right, right, right. And because, you know, historically you built a router and you sold it to the customer. And the poor customer was supposed to install it all, you know, and interconnect all those things. And if you have 40, 50,000 router network, which we saw in our lifetime, because there used to be many more branches when we were growing up in the networking industry, right? You had to create hierarchy and all kinds of things to figure out how to solve that problem. We are no longer living in that world anymore. You cannot deploy individual virtual instances, and that's what approach a lot of people are taking, which is a pure overlay network. You cannot take that approach anymore. You have to evolve the architecture and then build the solution based on that architecture so that it becomes a platform which is readily available, highly uh, scalable and available, and at the same time, it's very, very easy to deploy. It's a SaaS type solution. So right. you're saying do the architecture to get the solution for the platform that the customer has. Yes. They're not buying a platform, they end up with a platform. With the platform. As a yeah. result of super cloud path. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's what's, so you mentioned, uh, that's a great point, I want to double click on what you just said, because mm -hmm. I like that, what you said. What's the deployment strategy in your mind for super cloud? I'm an architect, I'm at an enterprise in the Midwest, I'm an insurance company, uh, got some cloud action going on. I'm mostly on premise. I got the mandate to transform the company. We have apps. Yeah. We'll be fully transformed in five years. What's my strategy? What do I do? What's the the resource what's the deployment the strategy? Single yeah. global instance, <laughs> code in every region on every cloud. It, it needs to be a solution which is available as a SaaS service, right? So the, from the customer's perspective, they are onboarding into the super cloud, and then the super cloud is allowing them to do whatever they're used to do you know, historically and in the new world, right? That needs to come together. And that's what we have built is that we have brought everything together in a way that what used to take months or years and now taking an hour or two hours and then people test it for a week or so and deploy it in production. I want to um, bring up something we were talking about before we were on camera uh, about the TCP IP, the OSI model. Yeah. That was a concept <laughs> that destroyed the proprietary NASA's yeah. network operating systems of the, of the mini computers, which brought in an era of uh, tech prosperity for generations. Mm -hmm. TCP IP was kind of the magical moment yep. that allowed for that yep. kind of super super networking connection. We inter lived through that, yep. Inter networking yep. as it was called mm -hmm. as a category. Mm -hmm. It feels like something's going on here with SuperCloud, the way you describe it. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's this unification idea like the reality is we've got multiple stuff sitting around by default. Mm -hmm. You either clean it up or get rid of it, right? Or yeah. you know, it's almost a, it's a, it's a either a nuance, a, a, a new, nuance, nuisance or chaos. 
And we, so, we live in the new world now. We don't have the luxury of time. So we need to move as fast as possible to solve the business problems. And that's what we are running into. If we don't have automated solutions which scale, which pr solve our problems, then it's going to be a problem. And that's why SaaS is so important in today's world. Why should we have to deploy the network piecemeal? Why can't we have a solution which solves our problem as we move forward? Mm -hmm. and we accomplish what we need to accomplish and move forward. And we don't really need standards here, do we? It's not we, like we need a standards body if you have yeah. unification. So, so because things move so fast, <laughs> there's no time to create a standards yeah. body. And that's why you see companies like ours popping up, which are trying to yeah. create a common infrastructure across all clouds. Otherwise, if we went the standardization path, it may take long. Eventually, we should be going in that direction, mm -hmm. but we don't have the luxury of time. That's what I was trying to get to. Well, what's interesting is, is that, to your point about standards and ratification, what ratifies a de facto anything? Mm -hmm. In the old days, there was some technical bodies involved, but here, right. I think developers right. drive everything. Mm -hmm. yep. so if you look at the developers and how they're voting with their code, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're instantly, organically defining everything mm -hmm. yeah. as, a, as a collective intelligence. And just like you're putting out the paper and making it available, everybody is contributing yeah. to that. That's why you need to have APIs and Terraform type constructs which are available yeah. so that the customers can continue to improve upon that. Yeah. And that's the net DevOps, right? Yeah. So the, the, that you need to have. What was once uh, um, sacrilege to say in business school back in the days when I got my business degree, I was my, my CS degree was, you know, no one wants to have a better mousetrap. It's a bad business model to have a, yeah. the better mousetrap. <laughs> in this case, the better mousetrap, the better solution actually could it's, be that thing. It, it I mean, is that, that thing. That yep. tips over yep. the yep. industry. And that, that, that's where we are seeing our customers. You know, I mean, we have some publicly referenceable customers like Coke or Warner Music Group or you know, yeah. the multiple others and uh, Chart Industries. The way we are solving the problem, uh, they have some of the largest environments in the industry from the cloud perspective and their whole network infrastructure is running on the Elkira infrastructure. Yeah. And they're able to adopt new clouds within days rather than waiting for months to architect and then deploy and then figure out how to manage it and operate it, it's available as a service. And, you know, we've, heard, we've, and we've heard from your customer, Warner, they were just on the program. Yes, okay, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. So they're building a super cloud. So super clouds right. aren't just for tech companies. No. You guys uh, build a super a, cloud for networking, it but is. people are building their own super clouds on top of all this new stuff. Talk about that dynamic. Health, healthcare providers, financials, high tech companies, even startups. One of our startup uh, customers, Techion, right? They have these dealerships that they s provide sales and support services to across the globe. And for them to be able to onboard those dealerships, it, it, it's 80% less time to production. Mm -hmm. That is real money. Yeah. Right, so so maybe Atif can give you a lot more examples of yeah. customers who are deploying. Yeah, talk about some of the customer yeah. activity. Yeah. What are they like? Are they laggards? Are they innovators? Are they trying to hit the easy button? Are they coming in late, or you got some some high actually customers? some of our, uh, actually most of our customers or all of our customers or customers in general, I don't think they have a choice uh, yeah. but to move uh, in this direction because uh, you know the cloud has uh, uh, everything is quick now. So uh, the cloud teams are moving faster in these uh, uh, enterprises. So now that they cannot afford the network not to keep up pace with the, with the cloud teams. So, so they don't have a choice but to go with something yeah. uh, uh, similar where you can you know, build your uh, network on demand and bring up your network uh, as quickly as possible to meet all those use cases. So um, I'll give you an example. So the demand's high for what you guys demand have. Is, demand is very high because the cloud teams have-, have Yeah, they're going they, fast. They are going fast and they, there's no stopping. And the network uh, teams, they have to uh, keep up with them. And uh, uh, you cannot keep deploying uh, you know, networks the way you used to deploy uh, back in the day. And uh, uh, as far as the use cases uh, are concerned, many, uh, there are so many use cases uh, which we, our customers are using our platform uh, for. One of the use cases, uh, uh, I'll give you an example of these financial uh, mm -hmm. customers. Uh, some of the financial customers, they, they have their uh, customers who they provide data like stock exchanges that provide like uh, market data information to uh, their customers uh, uh, out of 
uh, data centers, but, but now their customers uh, are moving into the cloud as well. So they need uh, to come in from the cloud. Yeah. So when they are coming in from the cloud, you cannot be giving them data from your data center because yep. that takes time and yeah. you're hairpinning everything back. From moving data is like moving money, someone said. And exactly. Exactly, <laughs> and the other thing is like, uh, uh, you have to optimize your traffic flows in, in the cloud as well because mm -hmm. every time you leave the cloud, you get charged a lot. Yeah. So you, you don't want to leave the cloud unless you have to leave the cloud, mm -hmm. your traffic. So, mm -hmm. so you have to come up or use and use a service which allows you to optimize all those traffic flows as well. Yeah. My final question to you guys. First of all, thanks for coming on the SuperCloud program. Really appreciate it. Congratulations on your success. And you guys have a great positioning and I'm a big fan. And uh, I have to ask, you guys are um, agile, nimble startup, smart, on the cutting edge. SuperCloud concept seems to resonate with people who are kind of on the front range of this major wave. While well, all the incumbents like Cisco, Microsoft, even AWS, they're like, I think they're looking at like, what is, I think it's coming up really fast, this, this, this trend, because I know people talk about multi-cloud, I get that, but like this whole super cloud is not just SaaS, it's more going on there. What do you think's going on between the folks who get it, super cloud, get the concept, and some are, who are scratching their heads, whether it's the Cisco's or someone like, I don't get it. What, what's, why is super cloud important for the folks that aren't really seeing it? So first of all, I mean, the customers, what we saw about six months, 12 months ago, uh, were a little slower to adopt the uh, super cloud kind of concept. And they were, they were the leading edge customers who were coming and adopting it. Now, all of a sudden, over the last uh, six to nine months, we've seen a flurry of customers coming in and they are from all disciplines, all very diverse set of customers. And they're starting to see the value of that because of the practical implications of what they're doing. You know, these, these uh, shadow IT type environments are no longer working and there's a lot of pressure from the management to move faster, right? And that's where they're coming in. And perhaps, Arthur, if you can give a few examples of... Uh, yeah, and I'd also just know. add to your point earlier about yeah. the network needing to be there because the cloud teams are like, right. let's yeah. go faster. And the network's always been slow, because, but yeah. now it's, it's been almost turbocharged. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And as I said, like there was no choice. You, you had to move in this, in this direction. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, so, and, and the other thing I, I would uh, add a little bit is uh, now if you look at all these enterprises, most of their traffic is from, even from, which is coming from the on-prem, it's going to the cloud, uh, mm -hmm. SaaS applications yeah. or, or public clouds. Um, and it's more than 50% of traffic, which is which is leaving your, you know, what you used to call your uh, network, the, uh, the private network. So now it's like, you know, before it used to just connect sites to data centers and sites together. Now it's a cloud, uh, as well as the SaaS application. So it's either internet bound or the public cloud uh, mm -hmm. bound. So now you have to build a network quickly, uh, which caters to all these uh, use cases. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and that's where like uh, uh, something. And you goes. guys, your solution to me is you eliminate all that work mm -hmm. for the customer. Now they can treat the cloud like a bag of Legos. Yeah. And do their thing. And well, I oversimplify, but you know what I'm talking about. Right. Right. Exactly. And to answer your question earlier about what about the big companies coming in and you know uh, they slow to adopt and you know what normally happens is when Cisco came up, right? There used to be 16 different protocol suites, yeah. and then we finally settled on TCP/IP and DECnet or Apple Talk or XNS yeah. or you know yeah. you name it, right? Uh, those companies did not adapt to the networking the way it was supposed to be done. And guess what happened, right? Yeah. So if the, <laughs> the companies in the networking space do not adopt this new concept or new way of doing things, I think some of yeah. them will become extinct over time. Well, I think the forcing so, function too is the cloud teams as well. So you got yeah. two evolutions. You got, yeah. You got architectural relevance. Right. That's right, real. Right, that's right. has it's impact. It's very important. Cost. And speed. <clears throat> and I look at it as a very similar disruption to what Cisco of the World very early days did to you know bring the networking out, right? Yeah. And uh, it became the internet. Uh, but now we are going through the cloud. Uh, it's the cloud era, right? <laughs> How does the cloud evolve over the next 10, 15, 20 years? Everything is going to be offered as a service. Right, so slowly data centers go away. The network becomes a plumbing uh, thing, very 
you know, simple to deploy and everything on top of that is virtualized in the yeah. cloud-like manner. And that makes the right. networks hardened, yeah. more secure, because it's a great way to yeah. be secure. Yeah. 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 You remember the glory days, we'll go back 15 years, the Cisco conversation was, we got to move up the stack, all the managers would, would fight each other. Now, what does that actually mean? Stay where we are, stay in your lane. Right. This is kind of like the network's version of moving up the stack because mm -hmm. not so much up the stack, but the cloud is everywhere. It's almost everywhere. horizontally. Mm -hmm. Uh, scaled. It's extending into the yeah. on-premise. It is already moving yeah. towards the edge, right? So, so, so you will see a Programmability lot. is a big program. So you guys are hitting programmability, big. compatibility, mm -hmm. getting people yep. into an environment they're comfortable operating. Mm -hmm. So the ops people love it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Spans the clouds to a level of SLA management. Yep. It might not be perfectly spanning applications, but you can actually know latencies between right. clouds, right. measure that. Yeah. And then, so you're basically managing your network now and it as needs the to overall be, infrastructure. Right, and it needs to be a very intelligent infrastructure going forward, right? Because cu customers do not want to wait to be able to troubleshoot. They don't want to be able to wait to deploy something, right? So it's, it needs to be a level of automation. Okay, so the question for you guys both on, we'll end on is, what is the enablement that, because you guys are a disruptive enabler, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. create this fabric, yeah. you're going to enable companies to do stuff. What are some of the things that you see and your customers might be seeing? as things that they're going to do as a result of having this enablement. Yeah, yeah. So what are some of those? I things? mean, perhaps you can talk through the, some of the customer yeah. experience on that. It's the agility. Uh, and uh, we, are, we are allowing these customers to move very, very quickly and build these networks uh, which meet all these uh, requirements inside the cloud. Mm -hmm. Because as Amir was saying, in the cloud era, networking is changing. Yeah. And uh, if you look at, uh, you know, going back to your comment about uh, mm -hmm. the existing uh, networking vendors, yeah. some of them still think that, uh, you know, just connecting to, to the cloud, uh, using some concepts like yeah. cloud on-ramp, is mm -hmm. cloud networking, but it's changing now. Yeah. So, uh, so it's, there's apps that are depending upon exactly. It. It's 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 all distributed. Uh, uh, like IT infrastructure, as I said earlier, is all distributed. Uh, you're, you're, and at the end of the day, you have to make sure that wherever your user is, wherever your app is, you are able to connect them so securely. Historically, it used to be about building a router bigger and bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger, you know, yeah. and then interconnecting those yeah. routers. Now it's all about horizontal yeah. scale. You don't need to yeah. build big. You need to scale it. Yeah. Right, and, and that's what cloud brings to the, the table. It's a cultural change for Cisco and change. Juniper yeah. because they yeah. have to understand that they still could be in the game and still win. Exactly. The, the question I have for you, what are your customers telling you that, what's some of the anecdotal like, because you guys have a good solution, is it, oh my God, you guys saved my butt, or what are some of the commentary that you hear from the customers in terms of praise and, and uh, glory from your solution? Oh, oh. some, some yeah. of them say it's, <laughs> it's they, they, when we do a demo and stuff, it, they say it's too hard to uh, believe. believe. Uh, too hard to, <laughs> it's hard, uh, you know, it's I don't hard believe to, you. I, yeah. I don't skeptics. believe you that. Uh, <laughs> because now you're able to bring up a global network within minutes. Yeah. Uh, with networking services, like let's say you, you, you have uh, APAC, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on-prem users, uh, cloud also there, yeah. cloud here, users here. You can bring up a, a global network with full routed uh, connectivity between all these endpoints with mm -hmm. security services. You can bring up like a firewall uh, from, a, from a third party or our uh, services in the middle. This is a matter of minutes now. Yeah. And uh, and this is all high-speed connectivity with SLAs. Imagine like before connecting, uh, you know, Singapore to U.S. East or uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Hong Kong to Frankfurt. Uh, you know, if you were if you were uh, putting your infrastructure in uh, in uh, Colos like e yeah. Equinix, you would have to go, you know, f figure out like how am I going to CLI in, exactly. connect to it. Yeah, a lot of hassle. If you had yeah. to put like firewalls in the middle, segmentation, you had to, uh, you know, isolate different uh, entities. That's called heavy lifting. So, so what exactly. you're seeing is, you know, it's like customer comes in, there's a disbelief. Can you really do that? And then they try it out. They go, wow, this works, right? They deploy it in a small yeah. environment. And then all of a sudden they start taking off, yeah. right? And literally we have seen customers go from few thousand dollars a month uh, or year type d deployments to multi-million dollars a year type deployments in very, very short amount of time, in a few months. And you guys are pay as you go. Pay as you go. As you go usage, cloud-based compatibility. Exactly. And it's amazing once they get a tr uh, to What's deploy the variable the solution. On, the, on the cost? On the cost? Is it traffic or is it? Uh, it it's multiple it? different things. Okay, it's, so. a, it's, a, it's packaged into the overall solution. And uh, as a matter of fact, we end up saving a lot of money to the customers. And not only in one way, in multiple different ways. And we do a complete T TOI analysis for the customers. Yeah. So um, it, it's bandwidth, it's number of connections, it's the amount of uh, compute power that we are using. Similar like things that. that they're used to. The, just like the cloud constructs, yeah.
All right. Yeah. Networking SuperCloud, great, congratulations. Thank you so much. You. Thanks for coming on <laughs> SuperCloud and, and looking forward to seeing uh, more of the demand yes. translate and <laughs> instant networking. I'm sure it's going to be huge with the edge exploding. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank so you so much. Okay, this is yeah. SuperCloud 2 yeah. event here in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier. The Network SuperCloud is here. Check out Alkira. I'm John Furrier, the host. Thanks for watching.